Watch this full series at the links in the description below and subscribe to our YouTube channel to watch new mental health videos every week. Okay, I'm gonna do something that we've never done on Med Circle. Um, and I, I just decided to do it right now, so no one's prepared for this. Okay. But does anyone else here have questions for Dr. Arrow on anything we've talked about in the series? Because this is, this is such, this isn't like a, nothing we do on Red Circle is a little topic, but this one is like, I can see it in her eyes. I, I, I'm noticing the way I'm feeling, and I know this affects a lot of people. Yeah. My, my question was, um, because I, I, I was a victim, so I'm, I'm curious, like, what, what, after because you said, you know, we want to take a shower and cleanse ourselves, like, what does that to us? Because, like, I know immediately, there's like, I just needed to get under the shower and I wanted to scrub and scrub that I, I could not scrub enough. Why do we do that? Yes. Let, 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 me, let me say that so the viewers okay. can hear it. Thank you. Off camera, she said, I... I'm gonna start crying. She said, I was a victim and afterwards I had, I had to get in the shower and I had to scrub and I couldn't scrub enough. Why, why do I feel that way? First of all, I wanna appreciate the, the, the courage of the person who decided to share and ask the question. People who have been violated, especially in a very personal bodily way, in a, in a way that, that shouldn't happen, feel dirty afterward. They feel ashamed, even though it's the perpetrator who should be feeling ashamed for what they did. The, the very, very common response a victim of, of rape has is to want to try to wash off that gross, icky, shameful feeling. It's, it's like trying to get rid of, of and to wash away um, the, the residue of having been assaulted and the wish is that you could wash the entire thing away and not have it with you anymore. Sometimes survivors talk about uh, like a f feeling that person on them still. Yes. And they're I trying to get that. rid of that feeling and reclaim themselves and their bodies. And if I, if I scrub hard enough, maybe it didn't happen. Maybe it, it can go away completely. It's, yes, it's like a ritual undoing. It's like a trying to undoing. undo what has been done. And there are different kinds of ritual undoing that, that, that survivors can do. And some of them are really counterintuitive and, and things that may be very hard for, for people to understand. But like sometimes uh, also, and this is separate from the question that, that was just asked, but sometimes a survivor will then choose to have sex with someone or multiple people who they don't care about even sometimes will go and intentionally have sex with someone who assaulted them. And that's like, whoa, wait a second, what, why would someone do that? And the psychological mechanism behind that is either if sex had been something that was very personal and very important, by treating it now themselves like it's something that's not important. Mm -hmm. It's a way of lessening what was taken from them. It's a way of, of trying to diminish the magnitude of, of of what the rape meant, mm -hmm. and in the cases, and this is this is not something that that frequently happens, but happens enough that I think is worth stating that there are times with uh, you know eighty percent of, of rapes are perpetrated by someone the victim knows, and it's very uh, a big proportion of that are are in the context of a, a dating relationship, and there are times when um, sometimes as a way of trying to undo the magnitude of, of the rape and to try to reclaim a sense of agency or a sense of power. Occasionally, a, a, a woman will choose to, to, to sleep with to, the person who, who assaulted her as if to try to undo being in that powerless position and this time it's like, I meant to do that or it's like a reclaiming power or this time it was my choice. And yeah. Yeah. it's an act of undoing also, it's a psychological thing that, that, that we see sometimes that I think sometimes people are very confused by and so I think it's worth stating. No, it's so stating. good. So many people are confused by that. They don't get it. Mm -hmm. They don't get it, so they write it off. And, and you explain it so well 
And so clearly that I hope that when people get it, they don't write it off anymore. They, they start to see it for what's, what's actually happening. Thank you for being so brave to share that. Thank you. And thank you for asking the question because I'm sure plenty of people watching have the same question. And now they have an answer from an expert. So this has been a great series. Does anyone else have anything for you? Yeah, I yeah. have one. So for someone that was um, in a relation, well, it's kind of a relationship with someone, and it was like a very, I mean, we'll just call it a rape, but a very like gray zone where it's you're like, it's kind of hard to describe. It's like you're, you're like you know it was wrong, but you like know this person, and so it's like a, essentially, so let's just call it a rape. That then. Nothing was ever done. Nothing ever happened. Um, they were, no one ever went to the cops. Um, what's your advice to someone to reconcile those emotions and those feelings? And you know, it's just it happened to them, and they just kept living their life and just dealt with it internally. Did we get audio on that? Because let, let me just repeat it yeah. so we have it. Okay. He's he's asking for somebody who was in an experience that was. For all intents and purposes, we're calling it a rape. Never went to the cops. It was never reconciled. Mm -hmm. How do you start to recover from that? I I want to ask a clarifying question. Is this is this a person who, recognizing looking back on a situation that that um, they're realizing that that the other person didn't consent? Or is this someone who was the one who didn't consent when they're asking? Uh, there was no consent by the person that, that uh, was the victim. Mm-hmm. So are we asking what the victim can do? Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. Um, I think that there, there are, um, again, when, when we're looking at something that has happened just because it happened a long time ago doesn't mean that it's necessarily over for that person or that they're over it. I think that looking at how is this impacting me, if I'm a person who looks back and realizes that this, there's been an incident that happened, um, what does that person need in order to move forward with their life? Um, it may mean that they have something they want to say to the person that, that hurt them and confront them. It may mean that they don't need to actually have that in order to heal themselves. Um, I think it's, it's incredibly underappreciated how much uh, a heartfelt apology and taking responsibility actually goes on behalf of, of a perpetrator. Really? Uh, this is, you know, we live in a very litigious society, and it's kind of like um, whatever you do, don't admit that you did something. But I think a lot of, of, of survivors, what they really wish is, is that the person who hurt them could acknowledge what they did and tell them how deeply sorry they are. Wow. There's a powerful TED Talk, actually, about this. It's trigger warning for, for anyone who, who is an assault victim, because not everyone can handle yeah. watching this. And I don't know the name of it right now, but it is um, a two-person TED Talk. And the woman is an Icelandic woman. Um, and she had a, uh, an exchange student come and stay with her family when she was about high school age. And um, he raped her. And the TED Talk is given by both of them. The rape, the, per- the, the person who and raped the- her and, and she give this talk together. And about how they dealt with the situation and came to terms with it. It took so much courage for him to... And her. Acknowledge that. And, and yes, and, and I do think also that, that perhaps being Icelandic, and he also is, is not from the, the United States, I think that um, the the different, um, the legal jeopardy here, I think, may inhibit people from, sure, from sure. being as willing to, to do this. It is really um, powerful to see because uh, he has really uh, acknowledged what he did. And uh, I will leave it to people who want to view this for themselves. But I think both of them have actually looked at, at this very terrible experience and have grown. 
Yes, and, and it goes back to the thing, right? We're, this series on post-traumatic stress disorder, disorder but post-traumatic growth and resilience yes. is, is that, and you can't get there overnight, but when you get there, I think it's a lot. And you, this, your answer to him, which was so simple but so great, started off with, what do you, what does this victim need yes. to heal? And I feel like sometimes we don't ask ourselves that. We don't ask what we need. We, we, we don't. And that's a, that's a great question for everybody's self in any yeah. type of traumatic event. All right, this happened. Mm -hmm. Now, what do I need? And if it's an apology, if it's a therapy, if it's yelling and screaming and writing a letter and then burning it, what, you know, whatever mm -hmm. that answer is for you, fine. Right. But that, that's a great question to ask yourself, I think. I, I appreciate that. And I, I know when people say to me, how do I know? how healed I am right now? How do I know how, how far I've progressed? I always say you can tell by how well you take care of yourself. Mm. Because people who are traumatized very often really struggle with self-care, having enough gas in their tank, having food in their fridge, getting, uh, saying no to some things because they need their sleep or, or they have something important to them to do. So true. And so as people heal, they become more in touch with their own needs and, and that they deserve to have their yeah. needs met. Yeah. Back to that title of the book, Your, your Body is the... The Body Keeps the Score. The Body Keeps the Score. Yes. Um, excellent series. I loved it. And I, I really appreciate the two people who were caught off guard. Obviously, we did not plan any of this. Uh, thank, you. thank you for sharing your story thank because you. your story represents millions of other stories. Uh, for more information, please go to medcircle.com, subscribe, you'll get curated information on whatever mental health topics are important to you, including PTSD. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. Thanks for watching. Check out the links below for more information on how to access this full series and subscribe to our YouTube channel to watch new mental health videos every week. Did you like what you heard in this video? If you want to ask a MedCircle doctor a question directly, you can learn how by visiting the links in the description below.